G'day and welcome to End of the Real. This week we are doing Blood Rain. It is an Uri Boll spectacular. It's one of his most famous films. He is a... God, is he German? I do not know. I probably should know. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he is. He is? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So he is quite a well-known Ashley. By the way, it's myself, Jared, and my co-host, Ethan. Say hi, Ethan. Hi. Great. Good one. Uh, so, yeah, we did Blood Rain. It is a vampire movie. It is based off a video game that neither of us have played and yep. neither, of us have, uh, neither of us have any knowledge of. None at all. Which is always great to then review the movie. Yeah, he's actually quite famous, Uri Boll, for making a lot of video game movies. And it's one of the and reasons... We all know how great video game movies are. It's actually so. one of the reasons that video game movies have such a bad rap. Like... I mean, most of them aren't good, but he he doesn't help it. He he kind of made like a whole heap of the earlier ones, and they're all shit. Thanks. Uh, it's just like you know Mario and all that crap too. He did didn't he make, make that. Mario? No, no I, I, I think he, he did, did like Alone in the Dark and some other games as oh, well. I can't remember. I he, of... he made a whole heap of terrible ones. You got to what? I think he did Far Cry. No, is that something else? I can't remember. I don't know. We'll have to watch them anyway. Oh, uh, do, do we? Yes. But his movies are so. Bland. Yeah, that that's the worst thing with this movie. It's just, uh, it is so bland and so little effort has gone into it. Yeah, we barely took down any exciting notes. It is, uh, just from like a filmmaking perspective, better than most of the other films we've watched. Yeah. It's... Like, it, it looks competent. It's competently made. Yep. There, there are actual sets. Uh, the effects aren't terrible. It's just everything else. It's yeah, you you know that they kind of know what they're doing, but they just go, okay, this this will do, this will do, and that's definitely the attitude that the our main actors had. Except, I mean, I can't remember our main girl, Blood because Rain. there are a surprising number of like recognizable faces in this low budget, terrible movie. Well, Michelle Rodriguez, she's in this, and it looks like it's not that long after Fast and Furious, so it's not like. I don't know. It's not like it's a low on her career, I guess, at that point. But she's just like, okay, I'll do this movie. And then she's kind of in it. And then you've got the Reservoir Dogs guy who doesn't give a... From a number of Tarantino films. He, he yeah. doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care. He's walking through this movie without a care in the world. He doesn't even act. And there's a point in the movie where Ethan pointed out that to fight some dude, he literally just oh, walks past yeah. him and kind of brushes the guy. With he his is shoulder. trying. He's giving such a little effort as he's walking upstairs in the middle of this fight. He sort of just pushes past a guy, and and the guy he pushes past it doesn't just fall against the wall or anything. He launches himself past him. It it's just hilarious. Yeah, it's like some of the background cast are trying, which makes. The underacting from the main cast just that much worse. Yeah, they just did not care. There's also Ben Kingsley as the uh, main evil vampire Kagan, oh, who that was bad. Put well, he has like these terrible monologues that he is just trying to get out as fast as possible with as little sort of feeling as possible. Yeah, and then in the end, his final battle is just him. Sort of lightly holding his sword, waving it around, and then just happily falling over dead. Like, like you could tell the actor was happy it was over. Yeah. It, like, we're, we we kind of just get thrown into this movie. I think we have a small little uh, epilogue, like, credit roll. I can't even remember. And we just follow our, our three heroes, I guess. Well, we don't know Blood anything Rain. about them apart from the fact that they're wooden. Yeah. And aren't trying. So they're just walking up and killing vampires. Well, they're part of the Brimstone Society, which is... Some sort of I, I don't. I don't think they were a secret organization. Yeah, they were. Were they a secret organization? Yep, but every, everyone seemed to know who they were. Well, their location secret. Okay, yeah, they've got a secret castle as right. their secret location. But um, everyone knows who the Brimstone Society are. So they're vampire hunters, but they're all being wiped out. And it... Seems like everyone in the mainland, at least, is the, everyone's a vampire. It seems like it. This place is overrun by vampires. Oh yeah. Which it, it's like the town people are just going 
about about their day and they're being swamped by vampires. You can't walk down the city streets without a vampire like woman beckoning you into a corridor and then sucking to you. try and kill you. It that's what gets me to it's one of those ones where it's like, oh, I, mean, I guess they could be like, oh, we had to show the action. But of course, they're not doing this 24-7. But it's one of those scenes where it's like, this town would be gone if this could, if this happens on a daily basis. Because we, we just, we walk through one street and we see like three people get killed by vampires. We're yeah. Like, this, this is not sustainable. They cannot be doing this for a long period of time. I mean, the vampires are just walking up in the bars talking to people. Like the Brimstone Society, they don't even have to look for the vampires. One guy, oh he, he God, just right? he just stabs the guy next to him with a wooden stake, and the guy turns into dust and because it turns out he's a vampire. The barkeeper isn't phased at all, and they're like, "Oh, sorry about the mess." And no, you're... no, he says, "Oh, I like you, Brimstone S- Society guys. You don't make a mess." Oh, okay. which confused me because there's a dead corpse on the floor. That's right. That was our introduction to those three guys, and. Then we just go to Blood Rain, who's... Uh, well, we're in a circus, I For guess. For some reason, she is a... She's in a circus. Well, it's like a freak show sort of thing. She has an exhibit in this freak show. I don't know how she got there. I don't think that's ever explained. Uh, and I don't know... They, her big thing is they bring her out, they splash her with water, which it's in this... It's holy water. No, I think it's just water. Is it? Yeah, yeah, water burns you in this universe. No, uh, water burns vampires. Okay. I thought it was crossing water. They can't cross water either, apparently. But is, should, I thought it was holy water, man. That would make sense. No, I think it was just a barrel. Why do they have a huge barrel of water? And then later on, when she gets, like, dunked into that uh, trap, that's just water. Oh, no, that's definitely holy water. That's on monk's ground. That is on Christian monk ground. Yeah, but it, it, I don't think it's, like... Water west or anything i'm pretty sure it's just water that's i'll I'll give it to you maybe the circus one isn't it's sunlight water and uh steaks Uh, no and the cross that's their three biggest weaknesses i I will give you that maybe the circus one isn't holy water but i really do think that the monks could probably bless i'm pretty sure it's just water what no That's crazy. Okay, fine. Oh, maybe we'll check that out later. I don't know. Anyway, um, so she's just in a circus freak show, and she drinks some blood in every hills, and she's friends with this blade girl. Yeah, one of the other acts in the circus has the hots for her and wants to uh, escape with her. Yeah, she and I'm like, she cuts candles. No, no one's stopping her from just uh, walking off with rain, right? It was. I, I mean. I like how we started off and we're like, what, why are they here? What's going on? And it's never explained. It well, just, no, no, no. So, uh, oh, no, we don't know why she's in the circus. Yeah. But um, the leader of the, what's the anti-vampire group called? The Brimstone Group. The leader of the Brimstone Group, Vladimir, believes that uh, he is about her and believes that she must be a damn fear, a special type of vampire. Oh, yeah. Who... Her mum has to have been a human. And yeah, her yeah, dad she's has like to have been a vampire. Half, well, half human, half vampire. Yeah, and it means she is. Uh, she doesn't get burnt by the cross. Right. Uh, or but the I, sun. No, I think she's still vulnerable to sunlight. Is she? No, because she's she's still vulnerable to water. She gets burned. I oh, think and she's she fine. She's she doesn't. She doesn't need human blood. Just blood. Are you sure about the sun? No, I'm not sure about the sun. Now if she's it's hard to tell because the movie was like 90% in the dark. Which kind of makes sense for a vampire movie. Yeah. Anyway, she, of course, breaks free of the. Well, one circus. of the guards tries to rape her which and accidentally drops human blood into her mouth, which sends her into some sort of. Uh, blood rage. Bl- a blood rage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she kills a bunch of the circus people, including the poor woman who was trying to save her. Yeah. Uh, hey, do, that's, is that the only time she goes into a blood rage? Yes. Oh. No, no, they, uh, when the brimstone people turn up and find everyone dead, they're like, yeah, this was like a, a young vampire. She's gone blood crazy. Yeah. No control. Those young vampires. Anyway. Can't trust them. It's so weird, though. So these three people walk into the camp where there's a bunch of dead people, and everyone else is, like, standing around... 
all the dead bodies trying to figure out what happened. They're pretty chill. And these three people come in. They find the the woman who was going to save Rain, and she's, like, being bitten, but she's otherwise okay. So they question her and then immediately kill her. Yeah. Like, without warning. And, and everyone around just seems completely okay with it. You've it's, walked into uh, our camp, killed one of our people. It's perfectly fine. I feel like it would be like if you're in a... They su- didn't know she was a vampire no, 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 no. It's like or the that they were vampire hunters. It's like the subway in New York, you know? But it's not You know how you're just so used to the, the freaks in the subway in New York? You just... According you're, to people so from New York, if you're with I've never friends, been the if or you, New York. So if you're with friends on the subway and someone comes up and just stabs them in the heart, it's an everyday. You'll occurrence. be completely okay with it. It's an everyday occurrence, you know. Yeah, and, uh, it's true. It's like the subway here, you know. You they see, knew the risks. Wait, is ours a subway? Yeah, it goes under the ground. That's a subway, right? No, it's a train network. What's it, what's a subway? I don't know. What goes under under the ground isn't that? Ah, oh, Jared, who cares? No, the point is though, you know how there's like. Creep, you know how you go on public transport and you see it every day if you go on public transport. I didn't know transport. you were a train person, Jared. Yeah, I'm a train do you, person. Do you hang out and like watch the trains, That's the thing. come you home see, and play you see train the weird simulator? People. You see the weird people you. that you, you, you normally wouldn't interact with, and that's fine. They're all good people, but you get used to it. That's what these people are like. They're used to vampires. They're used to waking up going, oh, what happened to the boss? And the, the boss man got killed by the vampire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone is very unmoved by what's happening around them. Well, that's because they're not acting. No one's acting. Anyway. Like, this is a movie. God. So Rain has made it to the road where she saves a family from some vampires. And she and, also uh, had like four flashback scenes. Does she? Oh. Yeah, she has like three. They're, they're of no consequence. It's just her, her mum being killed or something. Yeah, she has a couple of fight scenes. The fighting is pretty bad in this movie. It's there is a lot of blood, but it is very slowly moving the swords towards each other, carefully not to hit each other. Uh, the Rain, the actress, is more acrobatic than everyone else, though. She does some flips and stuff. You know, the, the problem with this, too, it's, it's more the fact that if you were to play fight with a friend, right, and you both have a sword, and you both say, this is our movie. You'd probably dun. put more effort into it than these people. No, but you know how it's like, dun, 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 dun. I'm making sword handle movements and everything right you practice that with a friend a few times if you film that with just like a kind of boring shot of you guys doing it and like and you're not professionals at it well they do some boring uh, annoying slow-mo handheld stuff for yeah. a bit. but but you get what i mean like that's the problem it wasn't horrible but it was kind of like these guys aren't professional swords people so they're not quick enough to make it impressive it's clear that they're like you hit this spot now you hit this but and because of course the uh cinematography is kind of boring it's not like it's cutting so it makes it feel quicker it's just like kind of they hit this and then this and then this but there's nothing else it's uh actually as i was describing to my brother it's it's like a it's like a youtube you know the youtube channels that do this sort of stuff like they try and make little movies or little cutscenes and stuff like this right Mm -hmm. if they were to do a short of like vampire fighter or something they would it's kind of a, of that level but without as much enthusiasm and fun and playfulness with special effects or, or stuff effort. around yeah because they they that's the level it's at they they have like giant blood splurts like cgi blood splurts and that's like a a real like youtube production level thing it's not terrible but just i just feel like some YouTubers would have made it far more interesting because they would have cared. It's the acting that needs to carry this. You, everything else is there, honestly. They they have well, they have what they need. They need the <sighs> acting. So the acting, everyone, apart from maybe like one or two characters, it seems they're like they're in like a bad porno. Like that's the level of acting. They're they're very unenthusiastic. They're getting their li- lines out, and then they do have to do some physical stuff. Yeah, and like, then they know no one's that. Come. That is the feel of the movie. Like, it's a bad period porno. Yeah. Like, it's like set in the past. Not, Except no one you know, leaves happy. Everyone just kind of gets all sweaty. And there, and there are a couple of, like, weird sex scenes. Well, I think... Oh, yeah, well, there, there yeah, are yeah, a few sex right, scenes throughout few, the thing, and it... Yeah. I guess... It just adds know. to the whole unenthusiastic porno part it's weird because vampires are hot just intrinsically by nature you know they've got that sexy thing about them they've got that sex vibe they're killing people yeah and you'd you'd think it'd be kind of easy to pull off but apparently it's uh it's not if you evolve 
Who, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how he'll take us talking about his movie. You reckon he's going to threaten to fight us? I'd love that. I'd take that up. I'd take you up. I'd like to old watch man. that. I'd like to watch you get beaten up. He's pretty That'd old. That'd be entertaining. He's pretty I'm old. pretty sure I could still take you. In a boxing match, I'd probably be fucked, actually. Yeah. 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 No, I'd, I'd, I'd pay to watch that. Mixed. Kickboxing. Anyway, I'd probably win. But yeah. Rain uh, makes it to a nearby city where she, because she's a, ve- uh, a damp fear, I think she sort of feeds on vampires as well. She can pick out the vampires from the crowd. So as she's walking down the street, she's just seeing vampire, vampire. Vampire about to eat someone. Yeah, vampire. she just sees so many. She uh, she decides to take a quick snack. Lures one of the vampires over to her and oh, it's a woman. It's a, it's a woman vampire, so it's kind of sexual. I well, she does. She starts making. I out think with I her. think it's sexual no matter who it is. She starts making out and then just bites its neck and kills it. And you're like, oh, okay. She okay. takes to being a vampire very quickly. Like, oh yeah, it doesn't phase her at all. The fact she's going around killing all these people. I honestly cannot remember what happens. So then meet up. she gets lured into a side street by a fortune teller who basically Ooh. explains everything to her. Another staple of uh, bad movies where they don't really... Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Rain just goes, lot, Rain just goes, who are you? How do you know my name? And the fortune teller is like, well, I'm a fortune teller. So I know everything. I know that you're Kagan's daughter, who's the evil vampire. Yeah. Uh, that Kagan is growing an army, and that he's after uh, the heart three, rip. yeah, three and... ancient vampire artifacts that make you immune to the weaknesses of being a vampire. Yep, and that she has to go get them. And first. that yeah, if she gets the eye, she can get a meeting with her father and then kill him. Yes. So and she... that she also explains that she's a damn fear and a special vampire and it everything. just explains it to you and you're like, oh, thank you, fortune teller. Well, not just woman. to us, but also to the characters who had you knew nothing about what's going on. So she was just gonna walk the world killing vampires. Yeah. Kinda oh, and, cool, and actually. also that that Kagan is the dad. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, I... I honestly can't remember how the brimstone people I actually meet up with her. I remember now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she heads straight to the monastery because the monastery has the eye. The eye. It sort of feels like a video game in that yes. it's like a cut, a travel cutscene just straight to the next scene. You know what he did, maybe? Although there are some nice shots of, I think it's like Romania or Germany or wherever they yeah. shot the movie, sort of Lord of the Rings-esque backgrounds just I feel, for a couple of minutes. I feel like I could get... Probably the bit... best bits of the movie. Oh, yeah. I, I could definitely get in trouble here, but I feel like maybe he did try and follow the game too much. I have no it, idea. It feels like... I have no idea I haven't played it, the game. Yeah, it feels like video game progression where it's like you escape out and then this fortune teller woman's like, this is what you need to do. And then you go on the mission and you go straight there. And it's like, oh, this... Because as soon as we get to this uh, monastery, he gets allowed, she gets allowed in and she pretends to go to sleep. Then she gets up to go find it and there's this giant deformed guy who's sleeping with a giant... Thing. Yeah, just some innocent guard who yeah. happens to have a facial deformity. Exactly. She kills him, and I think everyone's kind of happy about it. You know what? Including the monks. The monks don't seem phased that she killed this guy at all. They were like, who is he? Yeah, that was part of the challenge. You what had to he, kill him. What is he doing in the cellar? So she kills him and then goes into this trapped room. Well, it's a sealed room. Yeah, it's got a sort of... Spa- uh, sort of um, if you think think of like Indiana Jones three, you know he, that trap he has to kneel at that cuts your head off. It's like that, but times ten, and they're flying all over the place. And well, as we were watching this, I was like, you know what, Dungeons and Dragons. The saddest bit was the trap scene where they were like, oh, these traps are amazing, and they go in and they're terrible. But in this one, even though they're crappy CGI, it kind of looks like, oh, I get it. This is actual like, this is what competence looks like. This this is like, and she does all these backflips and this. Like, blades are flying around. You're like, okay, that's... I get it. I mean, it, it's better. I feel it's better to have shitty CGI, but to go, oh, that's a trap, rather than, like, a real thing that's so slow that you're like, and I'm going to walk around it. Mm. You know? So, she gets the eye absorbed into her somehow? Yeah, yeah. She stares at this eye, which is an actual eye, by the way. These be- the, the artifacts are taken from a vampire who somehow cured all their problems. But then... Apparently still died, so it can't be that great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it uh, becomes her eye. So now she is no longer affected by water. Which is good because the trap started filling up with water. 
and then Kagan's men attack. And this is where she meets the Brimstone people because she's actually fighting her way out quite confidently. And then yeah. one of them yells at her. She turns around, looks at them and stares. And then and then she gets smacked in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. So she, before they turn up, she's confidently like wiping the floor with Kagan's people. Yeah. Kagan has an army of humans as well as some vampires, which is how he's able to do stuff during the day and stuff. Anyway... Well, she gets carried... This is weird. She gets carried off to some other vampire's keep. Well, what happens is the uh, Kagan's lieutenant, whose name I cannot remember, short-haired, bald guy, Yeah. he picks her up and puts her under the back of his horse and rides off with her. I think all, all of Kagan's people get wiped out by the monks and the no Brimstone idea. people. That's where you have the, the most oh, hard part of fights. Were, you had ninja monks. We forgot ninja monks. Yeah. Ninja monks... Not because they know ninja skills, but because they are monks with staffs who sort of do a couple of moves. Yep. Yeah. Which is very cool. Very cool. Oh, it's awesome. Need more ninja monks. This is when Meatloaf enters the movie. What? So. Uh, oh, God. So Kagan's lieutenant with um, Rain. They uh, go to I couldn't tell. I, I, can't, I wasn't sure if he was a vampire or not. But they have to find shelter before daylight so they don't burst into flames. You know or she doesn't burst into flames. I'm not sure. And luckily she's stayed unconscious like the entire t- trip. It cannot be good for her. He visits this crypt, which is like an underground town run by Meatloaf, the singer slash actor. Terrible actor. He is a vampire with his own vampire harem. How do you think they got him into this movie? Do you think they just told him that he'd just be sitting around with a bunch of Romanian prostitutes? Because I'm pretty sure they are actual Romanian prostitutes. I'll, I'll take that line. I mean, I'll take that role, right? Yeah. I wouldn't say no. I'd say, okay. It's just him lying on a bed, Does spewing dialogue. No, barely he's a, anything. He's actually, you know what? He's a bit more charismatic well, than our these, main vampire. Well, um, these female he, he vampires is. lounge around naked. He's more charismatic than our main vampire. Give him some credit. Yeah, uh, he puts effort into it. Like, he tries. Yeah. Which is more than Ben Kingsley and, what is it, Michael Madsen does. I know. Well, anyway, they turn up, and then, of course, he's like, no, she's going to stay here with me now. Yeah, because he sort of knows that she's got the eye thing. So he's like, give her the eye. I'm going to pluck the eye out of you. So then our brimstone dudes turn up, and they go in the back entrance or something. No, they just go in through the front door and start hacking people apart. Yeah, then they There are a bunch of humans that are tied up, and they're being bled by vampires, so they start releasing them and stuff. It's like a weird sex dungeon Yeah, it's a a giant orgy town. It's not very good. It it feels like someone wanted to be like, ooh, orgy, sexy thing, but at the same time, they... It's an underground crypt. Yeah, but it's kind of boring, you know what I mean? It's very, it's very like someone who's like, but we'll it make does it fit, dark and sexy, but it's not. This is part of why it, it feels like a porno, right? The the whole thing felt like it was straight out of some terrible pornography movie. I don't know. I, did, I, I feel that's, I don't know. The, but just this, with the sex cut out. Work. These scenes work. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because now they just go through absolutely killing all the vampires. No problem. They get to this last... The, the vampires don't seem to be a, an issue at all for anybody. Well, I did find one thing really dumb. They get to the meatloaf dude, right? And now they are having trouble with this vampire. And what they do to fight him, of course he's got fucking stained glass windows. I mean, why? Why? You're, you're underground in a crypt and you're allergic. You, you, you burst into flames when you get touched by sunlight. So, of course, you have... Giant stained glass windows on each of the walls. Yeah, it's it's so stupid. Yeah, Why so defeat you? to defeat him, the the brimstone leader Vladimir uh, shoots all the windows and burns him to death. That's so dumb. I just I can I I hate that. I hate that in vampire films. Why would you have windows? Yeah. Don't have windows. I mean, it makes sense if they're above ground, at least. Don't have windows. Not if you're underground in a crypt. If you had to build it for yourself, why would you have windows? Oh, I don't know. So stupid. God. It's like if you had a room full of garlic. Oh, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire farmer. What do you farm? The garlic. Anyway, wow. I-, I think at this point, Rain has, like, finally you're woken mad- up. A vampire who just farms garlic? I don't know if they're allergic to garlic in this movie. 
Oh shit. Yeah. No, uh, he's a fisherman. They save Rain and they take her back to the secret Brimstone headquarters, which is a castle out on a lake. I do because not know. vampires. No, I thought that was like a village. Huh? I thought it was more like a village. No, 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 it's a castle. Oh, okay. Because the vampires can't cross water, so it's safe unless the vampire happens to have a huge human army, which the bad vampire does. Uh, this is where there's a weird side plot. So oh, terrible, one of the brim, one of the brimstone lieutenants, plot. Katarina, who's who is she played by? Uh, Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. Her father is uh, a uh, lord. It's, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy from Ball Titanic. Guy and drives cars. Billy Zane. Uh, so her father is Billy what? Zane, and he is a lord. He used to back the Brimstone Group, and he still sort of does. But he is also, it turns out, a vampire. Yeah, so he was thinking that there's another way for them to... He, well, he wants... I think he wants them to live in... I think his, his he wants to rule, but he's going for more of a... Vampires and humans. Vampires yeah. and humans thing, rather than Kogan's just, he's in control of everything. Uh, so he get he talks to his daughter. I can't remember what exactly their plan was, but he also wants the artifacts. So and the daughter really doesn't like rain. Well, the thing is, too, one of the artifacts is actually in Brimstone. So she's going to go get the Brimstone thing. Anyway, they leave Brimstone, except for her, the daughter, Michelle Rodriguez. Well, they well they heal up first. Right. And then we get a sex scene between oh, the male lieutenant oh. and Rain. Give me more. Because I think in like a day, they have a lot of chemistry all like of a sudden. That? What? You like that sex scene. You thought that paid off the movie? It, it was odd that it kept going for as long as it did. It was great. Yeah, but well, that, that's it. It was like an actual porno scene. Do you remember what turned them He's on? He's interrogating them down in the cells. Uh huh. They what sort of on? get together, and then he's just having sex no, for no, like no, five no, minutes. No, no. There, there was a lead-up question to what turned oh, them yeah, on. Oh yeah, yeah. Who has the like most murderous childhood story? Oh, that was so great. How did your parents die? Because they were so pissed off at each, each other, and she's like, "My my mom got killed by Kagan, who is also my dad." Yeah. And then he goes, and she's all pissed off, and he goes, well, my my dad and my mum got killed by Kagan. And then they look at each other, and they're all pissed off, and then they start having sex. So yeah. I was like, wait, did they just get turned on talking about their dead parents? Because that is fucking hot. Right. Anyway. <laughs> so they just have a really awkward sex scene against So we also the find thing. out that yeah. all the other brimstone groups around the world have been wiped out by Kagan. So they're like the last resistance group before I don't know the vampires take over. But they they leave, but they leave Michelle Rodriguez as soon as they get to land. Yeah, they did, why did they why were they going to land anyway? Oh, they had to buy supplies get, or anything something. Uh they I wait. Why were they going to land? Were they? I, th- I thought they were just going to go get the other artifact. No. I have no idea. But yeah, it, here's R- the Rain, thing. Vladimir, and the male lieutenant, Brimstone lieutenant, she's in love with. Yeah. Or has sex with her anyway. They head to the mainland, and Rodriguez uh, betrays the other Brimstone people to. She's got her own like loyal group of Brimstone people, and they let K- Kagan's army in. Yeah, sort as of. soon as they leave. But here's the weird thing. It's it's literally, it must be as soon as they leave. Because as soon as they get to the land, right, some dude who's been shot by an arrow rose up in a rowboat and also we had a cut no, scene they, going they, back. They have a shopping spree. No, but they just got, they hadn't shopped yet. They had only gone well, to the land. Well, it was really hard to tell how much time was actually going by. Yeah, from my point of view, they left and... They, she must have let, started the attack straight away because this guy got in the rowboat straight away and started rowing after them, which they mustn't have noticed this dude like 50 meters behind them because as soon as they dock, this guy turns up and is like, no, 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 no. It's not as soon as they dock. Isn't it? No, no. They've, they've been on land for a couple of days. What? It's where They're coming back to the ship. That guy's been rowing for days? They're, they're coming. No, no, no. He, he left after they left. He, he, he didn't leave at the same time. Well, this makes a lot more sense. Yuri Bowl, give this movie a 10 out of 10. Well, but uh, they're heading back to the boat and they find this guy there and he's, he escaped the massacre and tells them what's happening. Then he dies, of course. Of course. Uh, they go back to the place. They oh wait, they no, don't like do have they, all... a, they don't have plans or anything. No. They just sort of like, well, what do we do now? 
It's a blood rain. Rain goes decides back. to yeah. go back. Do they know that the other artifact is there? Dude, that was a good question because I honestly don't I know. I wasn't entirely sure why they went back to the castle because they knew it had fallen. Yeah, no one knew why they went back until it suddenly cuts to Michelle Rodriguez and she's like, I'm going to go get the rib. And you're like, the, wait, what? Well, no. So Rain turns up at the castle and everyone is dead. Yeah. A- and all of Kogan's people are gone. So yeah. it's she just thinks it's her. She heads down into the catacombs and it turns out one of the artifacts is like buried in, in like in water. There's like a well under the castle where this artifact is buried. And Rodriguez and her followers are there trying to get to it. So Rodriguez, who has been... This is why I noticed. Ethan did not notice this, but... Rodriguez, who has been wearing, like, period piece clothing the entire film, now is just wearing a hoodie. I don't think it was a hoodie. I think it was, like, a leather jacket with a hood. It was very modern. My point is, she suddenly had a wardrobe... Because she has to go into the water. So she's gone from period piece clothes that fit... Suddenly, she's wearing modern stuff because she's going to take off and go swim. Yeah, I, I didn't notice I, that. I noticed that so badly. She dives in. And she tells her guards to, like, be on the lookout. And she dri- dives in but to... the guards that disappear? Yeah, the guards who immediately disappear they from the movie. They fucking disappear. Uh, Rain jumps in after her. They fight. They fight. Of course. She didn't do the Miami tactic. She should have ripped her clothes down so her, her that boobies came Miami. out. That wasn't Miami. That was... Um... That was... Oh, shit. You're right. That was Nine Deaths of a Ninja. Yeah, yeah. She should have... Again, Nine Deaths of a Ninja showed us. If a woman doesn't have her... Um, Bra. Boobies, boobies covered... Yeah. They cannot swim. It's true. It's according to Nine Deaths of a Ninja. So what she should have done was pull that down. Bam. She can't swim anymore. Take it, leave, she's good. Instead, they stabbed each other. They did all sorts of things. Yeah, of course, Rain is a vampire who heals instantly. So she kills uh, Katarina, Rodriguez. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez, drinks her blood, and she's fine. And now she's got the two. The heart thing. Oh, the rib? Or whatever it is. I honestly cannot remember that point. I which think one that was. was the heart, which meant made her immune to crucifixes. But she was already immune to crucifixes anyway. That's right. She was already she didn't immune really to need one. It. She yeah. was immune to crucifixes. Yeah, and maybe sunlight? I honest, I don't think it... It doesn't matter. She meets up with Vladimir and the other, the last remaining brimstone guy. Well, they, have a, they have a great plan now. They don't have a plan. They don't. They Rain don't decides she's going to just go and confront her dad. Yeah. And the two brimstone guys, they do that thing where they're like, no, we're not going with you, but then they eventually turn up and go with her. Uh, Although, not till most... after she gets captured. That's the thing, this movie. Well, I thought there'd be some sort of plan, but instead she walks up to the front gate of this guy's castle, surrounded by soldiers. And just says, I want to I, talk to Dad. Yeah. I want to talk to Daddy. Kagan. Daddy. I've got the two artifacts he desperately wants. And oh, go, by the way, yeah. they're in my body. So she sure immediately that they so. arrest her and take her down to the dungeons. I, I don't know what she thought was going to happen. Well, that's okay. Normally in these movies, there's some sort of plan. I she mean, didn't have a plan. This is a kind of a boring cliche thing, but someone will go, I'm going to hand myself in and then you're going to start attacking. Then I'll break myself out. But it's like, it wasn't that it literally was like, Oh, whoops. And she's in the dungeon. Yeah. She so Vladimir and the last brimstone guy, are like, in the most like flat and boring way, they like, well, I guess you know what this means. Yeah, sure do. Walk up to the guards and start half-heartedly hacking away at them. They just and they, they were them. immediately captured, as well. Although I think that was part of their plan as well. I don't know. That it's such a boring movie. So they are also thrown into the dungeon. What a, it really is just a generic movie. Like the, the reason we're going through it step by step is because this movie is a generic step by step it's movie. It's boring. It's like so I was more boring. Like sleep during bits of it's it. It's so like other movies normally we can jump around and it's a bit they're, fun I mean, to talk about. The fights they're pretty bad, but there is a lot of blood at least. Yeah. I mean it's not the worst movie you've ever seen. It's not the best. It's just kind of a boring step by step movie. Yeah. It's it's not very entertaining at all. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Rain is taken up to be sacrificed and cut open so her dad can get the bits out of her. Yep. Uh, I don't know why it was a huge reveal, but it turns out she she went there offering the heart 
but he opens the box and the heart's not there and it's like but it's in her like she's tied up to the uh like the bench anyway he's gonna cut her open what he's gonna take the heart as well was I missing something? No, like, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know. They just did it. But that's made out to be like this huge reveal is that the box is empty. And it's like, well, yeah, of course it's empty. Yeah. Does it matter? I mean, he's still going to cut the door to open. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's I the can't problem remember. With this. I like the fact we're not even disagreeing. We're just like, yeah, no. yeah then this happened, right? And we're the like, two Brimstone think... guys free themselves. Somehow. Somehow. I think they like trick a guard. Oh, oh, do you? Okay. I so, did, did I miss something? Uh, the two Brimstone guys are in their cells. They fuck. Michael Madsen, Vladimir, right, leans out and goes, God, there's something wrong with my friend. Oh, God. Uh, he has disappeared. I cannot see him. In the most flat and like lifeless way you could possibly imagine, it's ridiculous. Like you, The only way it would make sense is if he's acting like he's acting badly. Uh, the guard comes in, of course, they knock him out. You know, yeah, because one's hiding. Whole, one of them's hiding. Thing. He's hiding on the roof. Yeah, and then they get up, and there's a fight. They fight their really way up bad. to rain, where they sort of free her, and they all start fighting. She, she, they kill him. The, the end. Vladimir dies. Uh, rain kills the father. Yeah, there's, there's Ben nothing Kingsley to talk about what has makes the most bad. like lifeless way of fighting. He's just sort of like holding the sword and walking around. And then it's constantly cutting to above him. So it's obviously a guy in a wig made to look like him, sort of. There's really nothing to point out, though, otherwise that's like, oh, my God, that's so bad. Yeah, or, yeah. It's just like... The bad guy dies, the end. It just yeah. sort of ends. I'm trying to remember if there's honestly anything else that happens that's, like, bizarre. There, there really isn't. This, we've been talking about this all week. Normally... Well, we haven't been talking about this all week. That's the thing. Normally, once we watch a movie, regard like even Theodore Rex, which that we learnt more about the backstory, and we're like, wow, and we talked about it a lot. Don't know why I just did that impersonation there. Wow. But I mean, the worst thing and in this movie is the there's acting. nothing. There's nothing to talk about with this movie. There's there was nothing that got us exciting. At least, okay. So I know a lot of the talk characters about it a lot to each other. A lot this of the actors we forgot we watched it. Yeah, we, forgot, we actually forgot. We forgot we watched I, I, this movie. I asked Jared what we were gonna watch. I was like about. I was asking like, what, what are we gonna watch to talk about? And like, what about that movie we already watched? Yeah, we. So we I wouldn't recommend it. it. Well, maybe putting it on in the background if you got nothing, you're like doing something else. I just wish it was more because over it's the boring. Top. We needed more tits and blood and gore. Honestly, yeah. tits, blood, gore, um, like crazy acting. This could have been just kind of entertaining. Better acting. Michelle Rodriguez doesn't uh, care. She does not care. No, 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 no. She the whole way through though, she is trying for some sort of like medieval British accent. Oh yeah. On top of her <laughs> American accent. That's right. And it's just kind of funny. But at least she's trying. Like uh, the the other main characters like Ben Kingsley and Michael Madsen oh, aren't trying at all. They don't care. They mumble through the lines. They just want it over with. I kind of wish I went to that documentary with Uri Boll, who was going to do a Skype session before I had tickets, but I got sick. And it's like I I really wish I'd gone to see that because I I would have been like, do people care when they're on your set? Do, does anyone care? That sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Actually, I don't know. yeah kind of a funny guy but yeah it's just i wouldn't suggest watching this movie um, uh yeah, like i said if you're doing something else or you've got some, you just want something in the background maybe I, it wouldn't actually, be that's one that thing bad. i want to point out so it's not offensively bad no, it's just boring because we i looked this movie up as we were watching it and it's for some reason it's in the imdb's bottom 100 list so i think you need a certain amount of reviews or something to actually show up anyway, because there's a whole heap of movies with like 50 reviews or a thousand that don't show up. The thing is though, this movie comes in at like number 24 or something like that, mm. something around that. And it's like 3.2 stars. <sighs> yeah. Well, it, the thing is, it's it probably not, is it's a not, three to four, but it's not, it's, it's not entertainingly bad. No, it's not atrocious. Oh, and we like, didn't talk about the dubbing either. There is, oh, yeah. there is an amazing amount of dubbing over both... There's a lot of ADR. I'm guessing the non-speaking uh, actors, as well as the English-speaking actors. No, I th 
the non English speaking actors. I actually think it's because there was just loud background noises and they couldn't bother to getting the proper voices of the uh, people talking. So there'll so be they whole sections where it. everyone is badly dubbed. Well, everyone's ADR'd. Yeah. That's it. I'm not sure if that was just a copy we got. <laughs> um, well, it's not good, but it's not movies... every. It's not every scene. Just a lot of the scenes. It was. That was probably one of the more funny things because it also throws it off because it. Not only can you it's tell It's very that... noticeable at the start because the English-speaking actors, y- you can tell it's not them. But they, they're not voice actors, right? So not only can you tell that in the scenes they did not care, like, as they're acting, but you could tell them doing their ADR, they're just like, yeah, what? Oh, yes. Or I think you the one I could tell the most with was actually that knife chick at the start who it sounded like she was reading lines. It was literally like, and now you can go do that. Good for you. Mm. And you're just like, oh, that's that's good. good. That's a wrap. All right. So well, you, that's blood. Yeah. You wouldn't recommend this movie? Nope, not really. Okay. I mean, if someone even says they enjoy it, I wouldn't even care. It's just such a forgettable movie. I don't, I don't actually get what all the hate is. I'm not saying it's I'm guessing, good. I'm guessing maybe if you were a fan of the game, oh, you'd yeah, be annoyed. True. Yeah, that, uh, that's understandable. Or if you had to pay for a ticket to see this movie. It's just people are like, oh, Uwe Boll, like, he makes the worst movies of all time, but he really doesn't. They're not that bad. They are just some They're of the there. most forgettable movies I've ever seen. Because yeah. I feel like they are bad movies that tick the box for being movies. <laughs> that, I, I don't mean, know. some of the sets were nice. Yeah. Oh, a lot better than tried. we usually see. They sort of... Tr- that's... Oh, uh, yeah. Huge remark here, though, from us. Just to take with a giant, like, bit of salt. Salt? You know, what? what's it called? Anyway. Whatever. Um, because we do watch so many bad movies, when we were watching this, we were like, it's not that bad. But maybe we watch a lot that of bad movies. That looks like an actual castle, not yeah. something that someone's drawn onto the background. When, when you see a scene that's with actual sets and people are wearing, like, actual clothes trying to fit in to us that's like wow this movie they've tried (laughs) yeah there's there's something there that person can actually read their lines yeah so that was blood rain uh anyway that was a great movie i hope you guys enjoyed the blood rain whatever it was i can't do anything funny to say about it are we gonna have to review two and three there's a two and three oh yeah as I believe the third one actually isn't even having the same. Chick. I think the third one is set uh, like hundreds of years in the future. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, uh, like the future from there, so still our past. Oh, uh, wait, what? It's 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 historical. No, none of them are historical, Jared. They're all fiction. Right. No, but our past. Well, yeah, it's set in the past. I thought it'd just be some alternate. No, universe. I don't think so. Or if it is, it's similar to ours. Okay. Okay, that's enough for this podcast. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hit a like, subscribe, whatever it is that you do on podcasts, and share us around, because that'd be great.